وشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وبعد one of the great good deeds that uh, actually we must uh, put in our um, agenda is uh, making peace اصلاح ذات البين making peace between two brothers or uh, two groups of people who are uh, having uh, some issues or, or some troubles or um, uh, some tension if you can say uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran uh, actually uh, a lot of people will feel like uh, not comfortable to uh, reach out to the people who are fighting or the people who have arguments because most of the time they think that that might get them in trouble as well uh, one of the two uh, fighting parties might take a side from you because he think that you are uh, not fair in your judgment that's why before starting to volunteer for something like this uh, you must be sure that you're not gonna side with with one of the two groups or the two brothers number two that uh, you have uh, some knowledge uh, about the issue that you're gonna deal with if you already know what's the issue and you have some knowledge to judge between the people because sometimes people reach out to judge and they judge with some ignorance so they cause some damage to one of the two parties they come to the weak side and you know say you have to forgive the brother he doesn't have to obey you this and that and they come to the the person that they think they can make more if, uh, influence on him so uh, that is not right as well so uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, when he mentioned the, the in, as in surah al-hujurat as we, we we did the ayat when he mentioned the fighting between the muslims he said indeed the believers are brothers Make peace between your own brothers. And fear Allah Azza wa so that uh, you have the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It happened in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It happened among the Sahaba. And uh, uh, they managed to get over it. Like for example, you have Surah Al-Anfal. When the Sahaba themselves have some arguments, and some fights over Al-Anfal, the gains of war, in the beginning. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَنْفَالِ قُلِ الْأَنْفَالُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ They ask you about the gains of the war, tell them that this is exclusively for Allah and for the Messenger of Allah. Before you fight over it, you must keep this in mind. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ Have fear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ And make peace between each other, you know. And then, Allah Azza wa Jalla started to talk about the true believers. إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله. And then he kept going on about you know the true believers, you know how the true believers are. So it goes back to the belief in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. When you find two people fighting, you have to remind them before solving the problem that both of them are brothers. And uh, what what gathers them together. What brings them together is the brotherhood of Islam. Uh, because actually in Surah Al-Anfal as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ If you were to spend all the money on the earth to make the hearts of those fighting groups, al you know, the, the two tribes from uh, Al-Ansar, Laos and Khazraj, if you spend all the money on theirs to make bring peace and make them love each other, you that wouldn't work and you wouldn't be able to bring them together. But Allah Azza wa Jalla is the one who put the peace and uh, consoled them and bring them together. By what? By the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The thing that brought them back is the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every time we see some people fighting, we remind them of the fact that they are believers and the believers wouldn't fight with each other in this way. They must reach a solution and uh, bring peace among themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس. There is no good uh, in most of the talk that the people do, especially the private talking when they're talking privately. إلا uh, except, then Allah Azza wa made the exception, that talking will be good and beneficial if uh, you are commanding or telling someone to give sadaqah for the sake of Allah or telling someone to do something good, ma'roof, 
or you are making peace between the two fighting brothers or the two fighting groups among the Muslims. And it happened a lot in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the Sahaba. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu was going to visit his daughter Fatima after she was married to uh, her cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he did not find Ali at home. So he said, where is your... And he can tell by her face that there is something wrong going on. Uh, he said, where is your cousin? And look how smart the Prophet Muhammad SAW is. He didn't say, where is Ali or where is your husband? He said, where is your cousin? He's reminding her also to keep in mind that this is not only her husband, but also a cousin. That he is bloodly related to her and he's from the family. They, they must get over the problems that they have. He said, where is your cousin? She said, he's in the masjid. Uh, she didn't say in the masjid. He went out after we had some argument and you know we were fighting with each other. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi said, okay. And then he went out, asked one of the Sahaba to find Ali ibn Abi Talib. So the, the, the Sahabi went uh, until he found him sleeping in the masjid. So he came back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, I found him you know, in the masjid sleeping. So he said, okay. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to him. And then when he found him sleep, sleeping on the, on the, the sand or the, the, the floor, and you can tell that the dust is attached to his side, to the side of Ali ibn Abi Talib. So when he saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he just stand up and sit with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants to joke with him to make the tension go away. Qala qum ya Aba Turab. Stand up or get up, oh, the man of the, who had the dust on him, you know. So that's why Ali ibn Abi Talib get the, the kunya or the title Abu Turab, you know. And this is not something bad, by the way. It's something that he should be proud of when the Prophet Muhammad gives him a name and he jokes with it's not just one time. That's why he gets the title. He tells him this name after that, you know, in different occasions. So he got the title from the Prophet Muhammad as a kind of joke between him and the Prophet Muhammad. So he got that name from there. So, and he's okay with that. So he forgot about everything and he bring him back home and everything is over. But sometimes the brothers will, you know, uh, get things to a different level, get things more complicated than they should be. The Prophet Muhammad was in his room one day and he's, uh, you know, he heard the, the, the sound of two brothers are screaming at each other in the masjid. And one of them is saying to his brother, no, I wouldn't give you that option or that option, you know. And he, uh, he's swearing by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went out. It looks like the brother owes him some money or something like this. And then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went out and he pointed at the one who was swearing by the name of Allah. He said, Ayn al -ali ala Allah. Where is the man who's using the name of Allah uh, you know, to pluck the mercy of Allah over the, 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 the other slaves of Allah? So the man was impressed. He put his head down and said, Prophet of Allah, I will give him whatever option he wants. You know, Whatever the man wants to do, I will go along with this man and give it to him. So he for, forgave everything and he, he, uh, he gave the man all the options he wants. So the Prophet Sallallahu solved the problem in just one word, you know, to get the attention of the man that you shouldn't be yelling at your brother and using the name of Allah in a way that you tell him, by Allah, I wouldn't give you that or wouldn't do that to you. You, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't uh, be using the name of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way. And another occasion, he found two people fighting all, all over the money as well. Uh, one of them owes the, the other man and he is asking him about the money. So the Prophet Muhammad went to them and he pointed to the man uh, who has the right to get his money back and he said like that, just like that. Yani an -nusf. Have a drop, have the money. So he said, okay, Prophet of Allah, I will drop it. Because he can tell that the other guy doesn't have the money and that he's putting pressure on him and he doesn't have it. So the Prophet Muhammad wanted to help and they took the word of the Prophet uh, for that uh, right away. Uh, every situation like that, we can solve it as long as we go back to the religion, as long as we have taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if someone doesn't have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're talking to him, he's not going to take it from you. And he will go along with what the shaitan is telling him. The shaitan comes to you at the, the moment of anger, when you are angry, and he will uh, make it look like this is the end of the world. This is a matter of dignity. It's not like that at all. It's that sometimes, uh, the the other uh, man that you are arguing with him, even though you have the right on your own side, he might be in a situation that he's not able to pay you back. He's not able to do what you are expecting him to do. So at that time, you have to lower down 
your anger and you have to think about the matter in a way that if you forgive, you will be forgiven. And there is one hadith that uh, Sahih al -Hakim, uh, that uh, on the day of judgment, uh, a man will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Ya Allah, I want my right back from this brother. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, how you want it back? And he doesn't have any more good deeds, any hasanat. He said, well, I can give him from my bad deeds, you see, which is fair and just. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he's going to have him in the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, look at the Jannah. So that's while the judgment is going on. He looked and he found, you know, uh, homes made out of gold and silver and the, the tops of it uh, made out of diamonds and uh, precious uh, pearls. So the man said, uh, these houses are must be for the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the best of the best. So the man said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, it's for whoever is going to be the price for it. And then Allah, uh, the man said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so what is the price, Allah? Uh, if it's not only for the prophets and messengers and some other Muslims who can get it, what is the price for it? He said, to forgive your own brothers. So uh, he said, the man said, I forgive him. Uh, for, for what he has done to me, uh, he doesn't uh, have to pay me back anything. So Allah uh, said to him, Take the hand of your brother and both of you go to Jannah. You see, so forgiveness will bring to you the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must always think about that. You know, when you are in a situation, even though you have the full right, you know, to take revenge or to take your right back, and you are able to do it, but you come to a point that, you, you know what, I will leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Abu Bakr al-Siddiq did, you know, imagine when the, when the rumors start uh, about uh, his daughter Aisha, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, when the munafiqeen started it, and, the, the, you know, some Muslims uh, unfortunately get into it. They just started to hear the story and pass it. Uh, and it's a long story, maybe inshallah I'm going to say it in another time. But the idea that uh, one of the relatives of Abu Bakr Siddiq uh, started to go along with that and pass the story. So when Abu Bakr Siddiq knew about that, uh, and after Allah Azza uh, revealed the innocence of his daughter Aisha from that in the Quran, in Surah An-Nur, as you know, uh, so Abu Bakr Siddiq decided not to give this man any more money. This man was poor. Abu Bakr Siddiq is the one who pay him monthly to live, to be able to make his own living. So uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq swore by Allah that he will never give him uh, any money anymore because he doesn't deserve it. Look what he's doing. He is <coughs> going along with, with the people against his own relative, that her father is the one who's giving him the money every month to, to make him able to live. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed one ayah about that. It says, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا Let them forgive and give the full forgiveness. Don't you love that Allah Azza wa forgives you and Allah is the forgiving one and the merciful one. So when the ayah came, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq says, عَفَوْتُ يَا Rabbi, Oh Allah, I forgive him so that you forgive me. You see, so this is the forgiveness we're going to talk about uh, and we have to bring it to our minds every time we see any argument going on. And if you are called, if someone is calling you to go uh, to solve an argument or a problem, uh, don't hesitate to go. Go right away. Because I have witnessed that. You know, I've been called to, uh, you know, sometimes to, to these situations. And it's really tough situations. And I feel embarrassed because, you know, at that time I was in my 20s and those people I'm going to are older people. And I would expect that it's going to be solved at all because so many other people went, tried to solve the problem out. It, it didn't work. So I feel that's a lot of pressure on me. But uh, I say, well, let me go and maybe it's going to work. And subhanAllah, we go and we sit with the brothers, we talk, we find where the problem starts and we solve it. And it, it works, not because of me, because this is the time. But Allah Azza wa wanted you to be involved in that. Allah Azza wa wants you to get the reward for making peace between, you know, people who are fighting or arguing about something, you know. And that might be something serious that, you know, a husband and wife will be divorced, you know, uh, or someone is going to lose his share of inheritance or, or, or so many cases, you know. So even if you went and it didn't uh, turn that it's solved at the moment or it didn't, uh, it didn't work at all, so you still get the reward for 
seeking to make peace between two fighting brothers, which is, you know, the, the most important thing. SubhanAllah, even in the Sharia, Allah Azza wa Jal rewards us for trying. Look, uh, when it comes to the Islamic rules and, you know, the Islamic knowledge, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that uh, as uh, through the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, that man the one who does his own ijtihad ijtihad is uh, to try to give a legal uh, judgment about an issue uh, of Islamic uh, law uh, based on your knowledge in the Quran and the Sunnah if you got the right answer to that problem then you get two rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what are the two rewards for? the first word for trying and doing your initial and the second reward for getting the right answer for it. But if you got it wrong, you still get one reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala One reward which is for trying and doing your best. You studied the, 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 the issue or the problem in the in the light of your knowledge, but you didn't get the right answer to it. But other scholars got it, but you still get rewarded for that because you tried your best, which is telling us one thing: we have to try and leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is making peace is one of the things that we must, when we are called for it, or when we see it and we know that, you know, uh, the brothers would, would listen to us, or we know them, or there's a connection between uh, us and them, then we have to go uh, forward and try to help in making peace between the Muslim brothers. Jazakumullah khairan wa sallam wa sallam wa barakatuh. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.